So I decided I wanted to play around with this thing some more. So I, to make my life easier, I took out this declination assembly. I removed one screw. There's a plastic spacer underneath it that holds this board on here, sort of. Um, and then I also, when I took out the two screws that hold this into the fork body, uh, this screw, this spring fell out, but luckily I was able to determine that it actually sits right in this little pocket right here. And it's kind of tricky, but you got to have this kind of, you got to kind of close this up, hold this closed when you're putting this back in. Because the spring sits in the pocket on one end, but the other end just basically pushes on the back side of this, kind of preloads this assembly um, so it engages with the worm gear, I guess. With the other, so that this worm gear engages with the other gear. I just thought I'd mention that if you're going to take this out, be careful that the screw doesn't, this spring doesn't fall out and get lost on you. Hey, so I decided to take a closer look at this uh, circuit here, and and I, I took out the the unit and. I looked at the pinning of the uh, IC chip, which I was able to look up online. I figured out which pin was the voltage input pin. And it goes right over to uh, a pin on this plug right here. And the ground on that IC goes to these two pins. So the first two pins are tied together, and they're ground. And then that third pin is the VCC or the, the input voltage. So on this plug right here what I did was I looked for the voltage coming in which according to what I'm seeing here for the pinning the brown wire and the orange wire are ground and the green wire is the voltage input. So what I was getting there though was I was getting only about five volts and it was dropping down to two volts when I would plug it into the board and I thought well that's kind of weird and then I started to think about the plug that goes from the arm to the main unit the missing plug I noticed a uh, cord I, I'm sorry I meant to say cord I noticed that online the cord is a coiled cord and I thought about how I've been using a network cat5 cable jumper cable to try and connect from here to here and the way that those cables are made is they're straight through cables in other words um, if you hold the two cable ends up next to each other I already put it away but if you hold them up next to each other the colors are going to be the same going left to right if you hold them both up in the same orientation the color coding on this one is going to be the same as the color coding on this one, if that makes sense. Whereas I thought about it and I, th I said, well, maybe the cable that I'm missing is the type of cable that flips that orientation when that ha you know, when you plug it in. In other words, on one end, you start with like, you know, red, green, blue, whatever. And then on the other end, it's the opposite. So... I, just for the heck of it, I didn't have one of those cables. I had an old cable here, all right, that had just wires on the end. I stripped the wires. I used my tools that I have, my network tools I have, and I basically made a cable that flips the orientation of the wiring. Then I plugged it in like so and leaving this plug unplugged I turn it on I have the negative lead of my meter on the negative uh, wire going into the power uh, jack because I know that that's a ground that way I don't have to try and hold the plug while holding you know holding one lead on this tiny connector here for for the ground and holding it on so if I go um, if I go over to that green wire now, now the green wire is 14 volts. That's my voltage coming into this thing. Because remember, I don't have an 18 volt power supply running this right now. So now I have the proper voltage it's going in. So now I'm going to shut it off. 
and I'm going to plug this in and see if anything changes. Now, hopefully, when I plugged it in before the wrong way, I didn't damage anything. Of course, it could already have a problem, and I don't even know it. But I just want to see whether or not now, with the wiring, what I believe is correct. What I, what I believe to be the correct wiring, I want to see now whether or not it does anything. Because I read online that in reality this thing really can't accept commands from like the RS-232 port that's on here. My thought was, well, maybe I'll just get a cable, hook up to a computer, find some software and try and operate the mount that way to test it. And according to what I read online, if this keypad is not plugged in upon startup, what the system does is it does what's called a handshake maneuver, which is that it sends data out or send something out to the hand controller and the hand controller sends information back and that that handshake procedure has to happen before the unit will accept commands for anything else like from the RS-232 port here. So I don't know. There is a device somebody sells for about 30 bucks that literally you plug it into the keypad. It's a little dongle. You plug it into where the keypad is and what, what it will do is on power up, it will simulate a keypad so that it will allow the handshake procedure to happen successfully. And then the unit will supposedly accept input from the RS-232. So uh, getting back to this, let's, let's see if this thing just moves even the slightest bit. All right, it appears to do absolutely nothing. So now the million dollar question is, is it not doing anything because I've already damaged this chip by plugging the plug in, having the wrong kind of plug on there? Is it not doing anything because there's something already wrong on this thing? Or is it not doing anything simply because it's not supposed to actuate this motor at all until it goes through its handshake procedure and somebody actually actuates it through the keypad or some other way, right? So I don't know. Well, I think I might have my answer. Well, I think I might have an answer. <laughs> this little device right here is getting very hot. I think that's a little regulator. I think I've wasted enough time playing around with this thing. So uh, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I would tell you what I paid for this thing. So <laughs> believe it or not, I got this whole telescope for 10 bucks. So <laughs> since I'm only into it for 10 bucks, I'm not gonna obsess about trying to figure out how to test it. Because again, um, without, the, uh, without the remote keypad to plug into here, which a, a good used one of one year about 100 bucks or more, um, you can't really do anything. There is a device again that you can plug in here for like uh, 30 bucks or 20, 20 something bucks and then you can use the RS-232 to communicate with the computer to control this but then you still get to have the software so I'm not going to go through all that trouble I'm just going to part this thing out. Um, there's a website called Cloudy Nights that uh, has a classified zero era that would be a good place for me to advertise these parts um, obviously I'm going to sell them as is and explain the situation that I have no way to test them let people do what they want um, you know so I guess that's it I haven't been able to advertise these things yet because when you join that forum um, they make you wait 30 days before you can post any classified ads alright so I hope you guys found this interesting uh, if you did please hit the like button and uh, you never know what I'm going to get into next, so you might want to subscribe.